Well, to, to jump into something related, this war, talking about Ukraine and, and Russia, one of the things it's doing, unfortunately, for us as an American is, you know, many countries are looking for something to compete with the U.S. dollar as a reserve, world reserve currency for many reasons. One, the U.S. is the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. Nobody has ever had this much debt. And the world's reserve currency is supposed to be neutral. You're supposed mm -hmm. to be using it for anything you want. Anybody can. But now, unfortunately, in Washington has started playing different. You know, if they get mad at you, they cut you off. If you yes. don't say, and so many people, even America's friends, are starting to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not the way it's supposed to work. So they are looking for something to compete with, if not replace the US dollar. No world's medium of exchange has lasted more than 100 years, 150 years or so. The US dollar has been around a long time. So we're coming to the end of the line, whether we like it or not. But now Russia, China, India, Brazil, Iran, lots of people are trying to figure out what can compete with and therefore eventually replace the U.S. dollar. And that mm. is a bad consequence. I'm an American, so I don't like saying it, but it's, I can see the writing on the wall. And since the Russian-Ukraine uh, situation arose and they've accelerated it because the U.S. just said you cannot use I mean, the Russians own a lot of U.S. dollars, which they earned on their own. America's right. taking them away. Well, I mean, that's not, I, I certainly cannot justify that. And I am an American, as I say. And many other people are saying, taking the same view. We have to find a replacement, or at least a competitor to the U.S. dollar. Now, your question specifically about cryptocurrencies, and many people are working with crypto, I mean, I don't know if the numbers are accurate or not, but the numbers are pretty staggering. I certainly know people who've been buying, have been trading cryptocurrencies quite successfully. I have never bought nor sold uh, a crypto. My wife is involved to some extent, but my view, Roger, is that you know the Chinese are ahead of the rest of us. Uh, in China, you cannot buy an ice cream unless your money is on the on the computer. You cannot right. use cash. You cannot use Chinese money to take a taxi in China because they're so far ahead. But everybody's working on it. We will all have it eventually. All money will be on the computer. The U.S. is working on it. And someday when the U.S. says, okay, this is money now, I don't think, Roger, that the U.S. government is then going to say, okay, this is money, but you can use that money over there if you want to. I wish we could use anything we want, but that's not the way most governments and monopolies and bureaucrats think. They want to keep their monopoly in their control. So my view is uh, that if cryptos become successful as currency, governments will do something to tax them or regulate them or outlaw them, who knows what. They've done it many times in history. So I have not been an investor in Crypto. I mean, I wish I'd bought Bitcoin at two dollars. I wish I'd bought a lot of Bitcoin at three dollars, four dollars. I didn't. I never have. And my view is that if it's successful as currency, the governments will take action. Mm. Uh, it would be wonderful if they did let us use whatever we want. But you know, at one point, when in England, you could even bank, uh, banks could print their own money illegally right. back in those days. Uh, but one day in the 30s, the Bank of England said, OK, from now on, it is an act of treason, treason, if you don't use our money. Yes. Well, Roger, treason means they execute you. So most people, needless to say, started following the government rules. Hmm. I'm afraid that will happen again. Right, right. Well, well I mean, the, the point you made about trust in the system you know, I mean, like, you know, as, as you say, when 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 a government says, OK, well, you have that money, but actually we're not going to give it to you anymore uh, and they hold on to it. And we're seeing that happen not just at, at the at the government level uh, with with Russia's reserves, but obviously all these oligarchs and those who went out there, whether, whether they, uh, you know, got the money the right way, the wrong way. The fact is, you know, they own that yacht or they own that house uh, and it all got taken away. Um, and 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 governments got emboldened to say, "Yep, we're just going to take that. Thank you very much." And uh, 
that there is that question mark. I mean, we're seeing this happen with well-known entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, who will move out of California based on what the government's like, you know, forcing him to have to do that he doesn't think is fair. So he then go down to Texas, et cetera, et cetera. The, the aspect of blockchain, which actually allows you to be able to link assets in a way that you can say, no, that really is mine. You can't take it away, right? Or, or we don't need a central uh, body to be able to track it and so on. Uh, and obviously in the commodity markets, people are looking at how do we, how do we start tracking things uh, in a way that actually makes it easier uh, with technology? Um, this sense of trust or governments being emboldened to be able to take away our security if it suits them, do you believe that's also going to be a, a risk that we somehow need to be mitigating, especially yourself? You know, you've got plenty of assets. Do, do you get concerned at all about the fact that they might come and see some of those assets that they feel like in the future? Well, I hope everybody's concerned about that. I mean, governments, the history of governments all over the world is that they love to take people's assets, <laughs> whether they should or not. And that is the way bureaucrats and politicians think, unfortunately. So everybody should be prepared for something going wrong. Everybody should have a plan B. Uh, everybody should have some assets outside of their own country. Uh, if, if nothing else, they're great opportunities in other countries as well. But also you have to be concerned that something might go wrong. And mm. especially these days with what you see, with that, as you brought up, you can see that governments are taking assets from other people that are legitimately earned and governments are just taking them away and say, okay, too bad for you. And I'm, it's hard to get those assets back when it happens. Mm. And it is forcing many people to reconsider having assets in US dollars. Again, I don't like saying it, but I can see it happening. And what we all need to be doing is figuring out, okay, what's the next currency? I don't know. If you know, Roger, please do not announce it today. You know, <laughs> <laughs> buy some and then uh, and let and send me an email. Send me an email. I want to buy it too. I'm looking every day. Right. Yeah, it's a funny world we live in, for sure. Uh, the, um, uh, the, the all of this, by the way, all, all of this is so fascinating because. You know, you're you're constantly learning. You're constantly like 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 looking for what's changing. And I think there's a whole aspect about education itself that I want to touch on because and we're going to come to a Q and A in a moment. But obviously, everyone's here because that they, they realize that the best defense for a changing world is to learn and to find out what's coming next, or at least uh, be prepared uh, as to what might be coming next. And so uh, there's two aspects to this. Uh, one, uh, I'd love to hear just uh, for for everyone who's on here, what you've been doing uh, lately that you've um, found very valuable.